Hi guys, Russ here from Wilson Land and Cattle Company. Today we're going to talk about a grounding field for your fence energizer and how we established our grounding field. A lot of subscribers have asked for this video, so I'm doing it and we'll walk you through step by step on how to establish a grounding system. Before we get started, please subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, hit that notification bell. Our grounding system for our, our fencer. When we first started, we just stuck it in the utility room in the barn and stuck a couple ground rods in the ground and, and called it good enough. And thought that that was what we needed, but really it wasn't. Um, and we found out the hard way. And the hard way was we ended up with stray voltage in our water. And cattle cannot tolerate any stray voltage in the water. So um, it kind of screwed the cows up for a month or two whenever we ended up with stray voltage and the stray voltage came in whenever the grass got up on the fence and it started really putting a lot of extra voltage out and the voltage was right around five to seven volts in the water and the cows can only tolerate about a half a volt and what happens is whenever they get shocked drinking they'll quit drinking for three days at a time and then they'll come back get shocked again and you know they just they just kind of lick the water and versus drink the water and whenever we were having problems it was you know in july whenever those weeds or those those grasses were up against the fence and, and causing it to drain down so upon a lot of research and trying to get this thing figured out and a lot of phone calls we called cyclops Fen, uh, and ken cove they have very good uh, support there to help help you walk through this but i'm going to show you how we did our ground rod or our ground field and first off we'll start off we we moved the fencer away from our water source to our shop and this is the fencer we're using it's a stay fix 36 joule fencer and what it will do is as the load gets on, a heavier load gets on the fence, the more voltage it puts out. And let's just check that and see how many volts is actually at the fencer. Should be around nine to 10,000, somewhere in that neighborhood. It's showing about 8,000 volts as expected. And then this here's our ground wire that goes out. And let's go around back and take a look at that where it comes out and our ground system consists of 29 ground rods it's 280 feet long it starts right there and it goes that direction i can't find the end of the the ground rod here but i know where it is on the other end and we'll walk out and take a look at that <clears throat> it's a little bit crunchy here today down in the 20s today um so here's here's the hot wire coming out of the off the fence for this here's the negative the negative comes out to about right here and hooks into the ground field copper ground rods plated in zinc and then we use zinc grounding rod connectors or clamps and then we use stainless steel wire and the grounding rods are 10 feet apart down through there and I'm going to show you how we drove those because I'll tell you what it's a real real chore trying to pound 29 ground rods and to be honest with you we're at 7,000 volts out here which is good um, to be honest with you to put a grounding system in you're really not going to know how many ground rods you're going to need until you get started with it and i'm going to show you how we put our ground rods in before we walk out at the end there to look at the ground rods or look at the end of our grounding system i used a rotary drill to put my ground rods in i started pounding them by hand 
and man i'll tell you what it was just too much for one person to drive, drive eight eight foot grounding rods so i went and i bought a, a rotary drill and i made a tool for it hey, toby. this is toby she's a little sweetheart huh your little sweetheart <coughs> You can get rotary drills fairly inexpensive. You can get them for about 50, 60 bucks. What I did is I took a a chisel. This here's a pointed chisel, this here's a flat chisel. But I just took a chisel and I cut it off. Okay. And I ended up with something like this. And then I took and I put a piece of plastic pipe on it with a hose clamp. And then we'll put this in our drill. And Let's take our drill and let's put our handle on it. It's a lot easier. But to me, this was about the only way to do it because, and I'll tell you what, pounding ground rods is hard. Hard on the body. Okay, let's go out. I think we're just going to pound. I need a... Uh, sucker rod drove outside here on my door so basically what I did is I used a generator on the ones that I couldn't reach with the regular electric we got it on hammer That's how we put our ground rods in. It's not not that difficult with a rotary drill. It works us very very well. We're gonna go out and discuss how we determined we needed 29 ground ground rods. Put this away before we go anywhere. So my shop's actually kind of clean, so I like to kind of keep it that way. What's up, Toby? My oh, baby girl. What's up? I know it's not time to go do cows yet. It's not time to do cows yet. I know. I know. What's up, baby girl? This is Toby, guys. She's uh. She's learning. She's learning how to herd. She really likes to chase the cows. And if you don't want to buy a rotary drill. You can probably rent one from your local rental center. I'm guessing that they probably have them for rent. Okay, this is the voltage meter that we use to check our ground field. We're going to go out and discuss that here. Just want to check and make sure it's working. Let's 
says 9,500 volts. So we're good to go. So let's take a take a walk out to the end of the ground field to where I have a ground rod up. <coughs> it depends on where you're located at. It's going to determine the, the amount of ground rods you need. The drier, more arid areas in the country, you're probably going to need more grounding rods. You know, who... Take a walk over here to the end of the ground rod. Ours is 280 feet long. It goes clear back, goes 60 feet on that side of the shop, and then comes, runs the fence line clear out here. I'm gonna, oh, it is on. Okay. We're going to come clear out to this ground rod here. And I didn't put this one in the whole way. I did not put this one in the whole way because I wanted to make sure I knew where it was just in case I needed to put any more grounding rods out along there at some other point. Okay, the way we check our ground system is we get steel ground rods whatever you go out about a thousand feet away from your fencer and you put those ground and you start grounding your fence down and ideally you want to ground your ground your fence down to a thousand volts or less and that will raise the voltage in your grounding rod and that's where your stray voltage comes from and ideally you want that voltage less than 500 here it's your end ground rod so what we did is we I used ground rods because I knew I was going to need a bunch so I bought I think bought 40 ground rods and I weaved them in between the fence and and stuck them down in the ground and that's what got us out to where we needed to be so after we shorted the fence down as far as we could get it furthest I could get our fence shorted down was two and a half thousand volts <clears throat> out at a thousand feet and then we take our we need a this is a special tester you see how that there has a ground there and then we check see, we don't have no voltage there and that's because it's not sh shorted down. It's right at, right at 7,500 volts, the fence, but we were actually able to get ours grounded down to 200 volts, which was ideal, but it was less than ideal by shorting it down only being able to get it shorted down to two and a half thousand volts I just couldn't get it anymore I put as many ground rods and stuff on it as I possibly could and it just I just couldn't get her shorted down the handheld fence tester will not work whenever you're testing your ground field you need something like this do not use a multimeter ask me how I know I started out with a multimeter and I blew the thing up because it just couldn't take that many volts so you want to use um, this style of uh, fence tester, one with the ground, where you stick it in the ground and then snap it on your ground rod. So you put your ground rods 10 feet apart and Use stainless steel wire to connect in between them, and then use uh, zinc grounding clamp, and just just keep going. Now, if you hit bedrock like what we did here, um, what we did is we we get down about four feet, and then we hit bedrock, so we can't go any further. So we took eight foot grounding rods and we pounded them in. We drove them in at an angle. Um, 
it still gives the surface area and it still works and when we first did it we, we cut a couple of them off we cut them off about cut off about 10 inches off the top of them because we just couldn't get them to go in any further and it was just easier to to drive them in at an angle and then we went back through and you can't see where all where any of the other grounding rods are and that's because we uh we dug a ditch with a uh, excavator and we buried that up and if you can bury those wires that uh that rot wire it's in between the grounding rods that acts as part of your ground field and will help help uh get you down get your voltage down sooner with less ground rods so guys hopefully that i explained that well enough to you if you have any questions post them in the comments below because if you don't have a proper grounding system for your fencer it could potentially lead to disaster on your farm so post me some comments if you have any questions uh hopefully you enjoyed the video nice sunny day here today it's a little bit cool it's only get up in the middle 20s it's pretty calm a little bit of wind but um it's sunny so I'll, I'll take that and don't forget to subscribe like comment share with a friend and hit that notification bell and we'll see you on the next video have a great day